Let's have a look at section 7.1, functions defined on general sets. Now in section 1.3, we saw our first look at functions. We also talked about relations and some of the notation and terminology associated with those concepts. Here we build on what we saw then. Um, and so let's start with our definition of functions. This is going to look a little bit different than what um, we saw in section 1.3, but not much. Uh, a function f from a set x to a set y uh, denoted f x to y uh, is a relation with domain x and codomain y such that, remember we have these two conditions, every element of x is related to some element, which we're going to call f of x, in y, and no element in x is related to more than one element in y. Um, back in chapter one, we talked about this in terms of ordered pairs, um, and the definition was equivalent to what we see here. So f of x is how you say that, and that's called the image of f at x. Okay, so in other words, it's telling you where x is sent to by this function. Now, one concept that I'm sure you've heard before, but we didn't actually use in section 1.3, is the concept of the range of a function. And the range is the set of all outputs. Okay, so to write that in our set builder notation, we can say it's the set of all elements y in y, uh, such that y is equal to f of x for some x in x. Okay, so that means it is the output um, or the second coordinate associated with some input in x. And that's different, by the way, than the codomain. Remember, the codomain is just what we call y. It's, it's that target set, um, but not everything in there necessarily occurs as an output. And so it's only the ones that occur as outputs that uh, are in the set we call the range. So the range is going to be a subset of the codomain. They might be equal in some cases, um, but in general, it's a subset. Um, so, as I wrote here, this set is also called the image of capital X under F. And we'll talk some more about that as we get further into this video. Um, you can talk about the pre-image of an element Y in the codomain. Um, and a pre-image is something that is sent to that y. Okay. So we can talk about a pre-image or an inverse image, but there could be more than one. And so the set of all of them, we would call the inverse image of y. Okay, so it's gonna be a set, may contain one point, may contain multiple points. It could be the empty set. Um, but when we say the inverse image, we're talking about the set of, of all of, those uh, pre-images. Okay. So let's look at some subsets of the domain and codomain. So if we call A a subset of capital X, C a subset of capital Y, okay, then we can talk about the image of A. Okay, in other words, we can talk about the things that are sent by elements of A to the codomain. Okay, where in the codomain do they end up? What's the set of outputs if we restrict the inputs to capital A? Okay. We can also talk about the pre-image of a subset C of the codomain. 
And so those would be all of the elements of the domain, which are sent to elements of that subset, capital C. Okay, and so there are those terms that I just used, the image of A, the inverse image of C. Okay, there are some exercises at the end of this section that give you a specific example to kind of look at, well, what's the image of this subset of the domain, or what's the pre-image or the inverse image of this subset of the codomain. That's going to be it for this particular video. Um, next, we'll get into functions that are one-to-one -one or, or functions that are onto. Those are two important concepts whenever you talk about functions. Uh, those are also closely related to the concept of inverse functions. Um, so that'll be next. That's section 7.2. Hope you found this video helpful. See you in that next one.